Good morning, everyone. Well, everyone who is watching online, because here I am in front of a very empty sanctuary. Welcome to worship on this, the fourth Sunday in Lent at First Lutheran Church in Pine River. I am Pastor Jacob Berkman, for those of you who don't know me. And um, this is going to be our first attempt at doing um, this sort of streaming worship um, idea. Just as a heads up, in the future, I plan on actually having this come live, um, or at least the links come live at our um, scheduled worship time of 9 a.m. Central. Um, so I will attempt to do that in the future. I have um, been in a little bit of a time crunch over the last couple of days because we just decided that we were going to do this on Thursday, and I've been playing around with technology and getting ready and that sort of thing um, for the um, past couple of days. So welcome to worship on this, the fourth Sunday in Lent. Um, unsurprisingly, there are a number of announcements. Um, first of all, um, this is a, this is only going to be able to get to at least directly those who are um, connected. Um, I'll put it out on our church um, Facebook page and our church website. Um, however, I am well aware that there are a number of people in our community who are not internet connected and not connected into these media either. Um, so I would ask that uh, my congregation uh, kindly share uh, this message um, with those who are unable to uh, gain access to it. Uh, so welcome as we worship. Um, a few other announcements. You, as you know, we are well in the process of um, continuing our fundraising for the youth for um, hopefully our mission trip for this summer. I have not heard of any cancellation of it as of right now. Uh, I, I'm guessing Youth Works is going to take a little bit of time before they actually make that decision. So, um, the, so we are still in the process of doing fundraising for that. Um, as you know, we were um, planning on doing cinnamon roll sales. Um, we are still planning on doing cinnamon roll sales. They will just be delayed um, slightly. Uh, I should also note that, um, I should have probably started with this. Um, as of last Thursday evening, um, the church council decided that all um, events at the church would be canceled on t through May 9th. So we are going to be doing this virtual worship um, for a fair, fair while. And yes, while I plan on, as I said, um, getting these things hopefully ready to go live at our normal worship starting time, um, I will also continue to um, post various videos and that sort of thing during the week as well as we move in towards that coming Sunday. Um, perhaps doing something during the first part of the week that is... Um, dealing with the previous Sunday and then sometime in the middle of the week moving on um, into the uh, next Sunday. So uh, that is where we are. It is a strange place to be, but um, here we are. Um, this morning we are going to be doing a fairly abbreviated service um, because of the short time frame. I have not had the chance to uh, fully explore uh, copyright and streaming issues for things that are not my own work. Um, so the, so it, we will, as we go forward, I believe, end up adding a few more liturgical elements into um, this streaming service than we will have this morning. This morning is going to be a fairly basic service of um, scripture, sermon, and some prayer as we gather in this rather unusual time. I want to um, note also um, on the um, that are in the announcements and um, bulletin. These are on the church website as well. Um, that um, private choice members should get their um, choice dollar selection um, in before the end of the month. Otherwise, um, they go back into the private pot. Um, please do consider First Lutheran Church as one of your private choice options. Um, while I'm on that topic of money, um, you will all be receiving a letter 
um, or at least all, most of you will be receiving a letter um, early this next week that um, we posted on Friday concerning uh, what is happening. One, one, one of our major challenges, because um, here I am standing in front of a very empty church, one of our major challenges um, will be the matter of offering, um, because we are not going to be collecting a weekly offering. Um, and, and this will affect us. So um, I would invite you, as I do in that letter, to um, consider dropping by during normal office hours to um, leave your offering. Um, you can, of course, also mail it. And um, most banks, um, you, you can set up an auto pay um, type of thing as well. Um, that would be very much appreciated um, because church does continue. Um, the ministry of the church, though it is different, um, will continue during this time when we are not um, gathering as publicly for worship. Um, speaking of that, other organizations are also very much in need. Um, as you may recall, March is um, Food Shelf Month, um, and our midweek Lent offerings were going to the Food Shelf, and um, we were supposed to be doing a noisy offering today that would also have been going to the Food Shelf. So um, while I it will be a little bit selfish and say, yes, please do continue to remember the church in your offerings. Um, also, be, also remember organizations like the Food Shelf, um, especially in this time when um, so, many are so many will be struggling financially because of um, you know, lost work and that sort of thing with um, businesses either closing or having a lot less activity than they normally do. Um, there are a couple other um, notes. Um, on March 24th, there is going to be a blood drive. It is, as of right now, still happening at the warehouse. That is March 24th from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, Walk-ins will be welcome um, for that. You can um, find more information on, about this in the... Um, in the um, announcement portion of the bulletin. Um, we're not entirely sure what we're going to do about the Easter flowers and that sort of thing because unfortunately this period of cancellation does also um, move beyond the Easter, move through the Easter um, holiday and festival. So um, there will be more information about Easter stuff as we get closer to that. Um, with that, um, I would invite you to um, join with me in a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Gracious God, you come to us in all of the unknown aspects of our way and our life. Continue to walk with your people as we struggle in this time of change, as we struggle in this time where we continue to be um, socially distant or, phys or at least physically distant from each other, help us not to be socially disconnected. Help us to find new and interesting ways in which we can continue to be connected with each other and continue to proclaim your life-giving gospel for the sake of the whole world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The service would at this point normally continue with the reading of the gospel. Um, I'm not going to fill up um, data time on my um, video with me standing here and reading the gospel. Um, invite, er, with me standing here and reading the scripture readings. Instead, I would invite you to um, take out your Bible if you don't have one handy, you can um, get a number of free Bible apps on your phone. Or if you um, don't feel up to doing that either, um, there's a wonderful website called Ormus, O-R-E-M-U-S, Bible Browser. Um, I would invite you to go there um, and read the scripture readings for this morning. These readings come from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13, Psalm 23, Ephesians 5, 8 to 14, 
And the Gospel is from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. This would be a good time to actually pause this recording and play back and go ahead and look up those Bible verses. Again, um, 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 13, Psalm 23, Ephesians 5, 8 to 14, and John 9, 1 to 41. I, however, am not going to pause. I am going to um, continue onward um, with my little attempt at doing a children's message. This is going to be really strange because I'm not entirely sure how to do it without getting any, you know, interaction and that sort of thing. Um, so what I wanted to focus on for this children's message time is that first reading from 1 Samuel. This is one of probably, the, this is a fairly well-known story. It is the story of Samuel coming to Samuel coming to Jesse and looking for the new king of Israel. Um, we, we, we sort of ignore the beginning part of this, but we, we, we remember the part of the story that um, where all of the sons of Jesse start showing up before Samuel, and Samuel, you know, looks at the first one and he's really fine looking. He's he's a good, strong young man. And Samuel thinks, you know what? I bet this is the one. I bet this is the one that God wants to become the new king of Israel. Well, nope. Nope, 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 nope. God has something else in mind. So all of the, so they keep coming, and they keep coming, and they keep coming. And eventually, no more are coming. But there is one more. He's still left out tending the sheep. This is the youngest son. This is the little boy, David. This is the little boy, David. And he's still out there tending the sheep. And eventually they decide, you know, okay, well, I guess we'll go send for David and see, you know, who knows, it can't possibly be him because, well, who would want a little boy? Who would want a little child as a leader? No one, right? We, 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 we don't want to call kids leaders. But here God sort of throws things up in the air and um, undoes our very expectations. This little boy finally comes to Samuel. And Samuel gets the message from God that this, this is the one who is the new king of Israel. He is small and insignificant, really not much of, not much of anything compared to his brothers. So often, I think, um, we can overlook the children in our midst. So often I think we can ignore those who, you know, are not strong and powerful looking or wealthy or any of the other status symbols that we throw onto people. But here God chooses David. David, the child, the little one, the insignificant one. And as he does so, I think this is a reminder that we are each and all loved and claimed by God no matter who we are, no matter how old we are, no matter how powerful we are, no matter how good looking we are. We are claimed and known by God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, your choice of David as your anointed. Your choice of David, the young child, is a shocking and surprising choice. And it is a choice for which we give thanks. Because we know that we too 
are sometimes the ones who are not thought of, sometimes the ones who are ignored because we are young, because we are insignificant, because we are not wealthy, or because we are not powerful. But you remind us that you do love and choose each and every one of us. For this we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you in peace from God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. It was almost 12 years ago. I had just finished my first year of seminary and moved back to the Aina of Oahu. I wasn't moving back into my apartment or continuing my life as a graduate student in mathematics at the University of Hawaii, Manoa. Rather, I was an intern chaplain at the Queen's Medical Center for the summer. I have a number of memories about my first 10 week stint as a hospital chaplain that I could talk about, but I don't have time. However, as I stand here this morning, two of them strike me. The first is a rather innocuous one. I had hitherto preached enough sermons that I could probably count them on the fingers of one hand without repeating fingers. I think I'd done three. I, I, I know I had done two. One was during my senior year at St. Olaf, six years before. For those of you who are counting, you now have a pretty good idea of how old I am. And one was the day before I started at Queens at my home congregation, Lutheran Church of Honolulu. I might have done one more there before I left the seminary too. I don't remember. It was a while ago. A couple of weeks into my chaplaincy internship, what in church speak is called the first unit of clinical pastoral education, also known as CBE. My on-call shift rotated to the 24-hour Sunday shift. In addition to being the only chaplain in a 500-plus bed hospital during this 24-hour period, one of the responsibilities was to create and lead worship. I'd done plenty of worship leadership, and all I really had time for was a simple liturgy with prayer, scripture, a few canned songs, and a sermon. It was a sermon that was new and odd. Odd because there was no one there. I preached to a camera, one that was hooked into the hospital network and broadcast the service on one of the television channels in the hospital. It was the strangest worship experience I have ever had until today. Maybe somebody watched these services that the chaplains would do to an empty room, unless Saturday was really boring and the Saturday chaplain decided to stay every Sunday. But I don't recall a patient ever telling me that they had watched them. Yet, the services were there. I have no idea if anyone is going to watch or listen to this. Hey, who knows? Sometimes I wonder if anyone is watching or listening to me on a Sunday when we are all gathered here. We watch things from a distance, like we watch television, or like you're watching me doing this sermon, or we watch the very peculiar afflictions that one can encounter in the major trauma center or semi-tropical general surgery ward that was my experience of Queens. One of the harder things during my chaplaincy internship, that is, that is the other notable thing that stands out to me, was making the shift from watching the afflictions and how people were different from me to seeing the person as a person. 
This is the very same challenge that nearly everyone has in our gospel lesson. Everyone watches the blind man to discern some sort of sin that presumably caused the blindness, watches the blindness itself, or watches the manner of living that his blindness is mandated, namely, being a beggar. The prime example of this watching is the blind man's neighbors. They can't even figure out if it is or isn't him anymore because they never really saw him, but only watched his condition and state. And now that he's no longer begging and now able to see, they are no longer able to identify him. If we are honest with ourselves, we should be able to, we should be able to identify with these neighbors. I don't know about you, but there have been a lot of people in my life who I have vaguely known in passing. I might have known their name. I might not have. I may have been able to recognize them in one setting where they were doing the thing that they were supposed to be doing. But in a different setting, I had no idea who they were. I've been like the neighbors. And while their response may not be the most commendable, nor might mine be, I can understand where they are coming from. And I'm sure that many others can as well. I can even understand the Pharisees and the disciples in this scene. They want to know the how and the why of the man's blindness and healing. These are normal questions for any of us to ask and for which we would desire answers. This is especially the case when something that seems to be unexplained happens. I remember one of my favorite patients at Queens. Yes, I did have this. This was a person who I actually went to see several times a real oddity in the hospital world. But on one of my last encounters, I learned that this patient had just been diagnosed with a terminal condition. Why becomes a very big question. And even those who under ordinary circumstances wouldn't come close to claiming sin as part of the why, may actually do so. We struggle to explain the unexplainable. I think that's part of our condition today as we're facing this unprecedented situation. Why is this happening? How do we fix it? How long is it going to go on? Answers to these sorts of questions allow us to give boundaries to the challenge, whether it is a diagnosis or a public health crisis. And it's very frustrating, challenging and stress-inducing when they aren't answered. Maybe that's why the disciples want to know about the source of this poor random man's ailment, and why the Pharisees and others want to know how the healing happened as often as they do. Hey, maybe pause here and reread the Gospel lesson. Remember, it's John 9, 1 to 41, counting the number of hows. Did you do it? I counted one, two, three, two, three. six. <laughs> I, I, I had to use a finger. <sighs> to ask why and how questions is not invariably bad. But focusing on them can cloud what should be our focus. Speaking of focusing on perhaps not quite the right thing, there are the parents of the blind man. Unlike the neighbors whose lack of recognition of the blind man may not be the most commendable, but is understandable, the parents' motives are quite different. According to the writer of the Gospel, they are concerned about themselves. We are told that they answered, We do not know how he sees, 
nor do we know who opened his eyes, because they were afraid of the Jews. That they would be put out of the synagogue if they said that it was Jesus who did it. From an historical perspective, this seems to be much more to the world of the writer of the gospel than to the characters in the story. But it applies also to us in an insightful way. Do you remember the news stories of the spring breakers in Florida from earlier this week or last week? You know, t time has been really strange for me the last week or so. They were flouting the idea of social distancing. I think I remember an interview with one in which the spring breaker said something along the lines of, I'm going to have fun. I don't care if it hurts anyone else. My point is not a generational one, but a societal one. Or maybe just a human one. Selfishness. In this day of COVID-19 and social distancing, we could be selfish and think about how all of this is inconveniencing me. And it is inconveniencing me. But I should have some more important things to think about than just that. Namely, how does what I do or how could what I do adversely affect others? Something that can help with selfishness. Something that is well known to those in recovery is the need for a higher power. This need comes into play in addiction because selfishness is a primary side effect of the disease. As Christians, we identify this higher power as the God uniquely and fully revealed in Jesus. The man born blind is found, as you may recall, at the end of the scene by Jesus. A straightforward reading of this story shows that the man prior to this has yet to actually see Jesus. Remember, he was blind when Jesus sent him off to wash. Yet when they come together at the end of the story, he confesses, I believe, and he worships Jesus. The only time that this latter act happens in John's Gospel. We take this as an act of thanksgiving, and it is. But given the comments earlier in the reading, it is an act that is not without major consequences. By behaving thusly towards Jesus, he cannot be thinking primarily about himself, but is putting at the center this one who has truly enabled him to see fully. One can only see so fully when one places Christ and Christ's call in front of one's own interests. Yet, if we fail to place Christ thusly, as the Pharisees do, we become too focused on how we are surrounded by our enemies to be able to see God and be able to see our neighbors. And that is what we are called to do in this gospel, to see God and to see our neighbors. Therefore, we cannot become so focused on the enemies that surround us, but to focus on Christ, our center. May the grace of God, which sees and knows each and every one of us, continue to guide, surround, and keep us this day and evermore. Amen.
hearts towards the God whose grace is merciful and just. We pray for the church, the world that is our common home, and all who are in need. As we seek in our settings to become an, an oasis for others, where all may be seen and loved for who they truly are, may it also bring us together as the broader people of God, enabling us to see and focus on those things that we have in common, rather than that which divides us. Strengthen us in our vocations, especially in this time where this time when many of these are difficult. So that in whatever we are called to be and do, be as students and teachers facing the challenges of a new instructional model um, of distance learning, medical personnel and emergency workers on the front lines of this COVID epidemic, military who are also in the process of being called forward, farmers, Workers in the service of hospitality and tourism industry who are struggling from the lack of these activities, as well as small business owners and workers. Public employees, parents and children. That in all of these and the many more ways in which our lives reflect your call, may we reflect your fairness, justice, and desire for reconciliation for all people. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Let your light shine through us as you send us out to serve as witnesses to your justice for all creation. The sun and the moon and the stars and the planets, the water and rivers and lakes and oceans and ponds, life from the smallest microbe to the largest whale, the peoples of this planet, those near to us in our towns, neighborhoods, and schools, to those we will never meet in distant lands. Even as we relish the coming of the spring, remember, we remember those for whom this is not good news, especially those who have lost and struggled with life, home, or livelihood due to flooding. Forgive us our desire to dominate creation instead of serving as faithful stewards and caretakers. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We answer your call to hold all your people in our hearts as we offer ourselves and the church to be an oasis to those struggling through the wilderness of broken trust, broken relationships, shame, or enmity. Give hope to those whose hope is damaged by circumstances. Refugees fleeing from their homes. Victims of war and violence. The poor and the hungry, the lonely and the outcast, the grieving and the dying. Be with our nation, our state, and our communities, and our world as we struggle with the fear and uncertainty brought about by COVID-19. May your transforming and steadfast love, mercy, and grace continue to be proclaimed through the power of the Holy Spirit to this and every generation, so that praising you for being with us through the wilderness, we may at the last day be joined with the communion of saints and the choirs of heavenly angels around your throne. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers and those that are left on the silence of our hearts in the name of Christ, who is the light of the world and who is one with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Should have done a little better job watching the liturgy. Um, we will now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of the life everlasting. Amen. Howsoever we are gathered, Lord, we ask that you remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace this day and every day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be at peace, for Christ is with you. So this will end up concluding our um, first attempt at a virtual worship service. Um, I thank you for um, being along with me this morning. Um, and as we continue to move forward through this time, um, I would invite you to continue to um, keep checking back to our Facebook page and website uh, where other um, videos will be posted as we move forward. And as I said at the beginning of the service, um, my goal is to actually, um, now that I know what I'm doing and where our um, plans are going as we move forward, my goal is to actually have this um, posted and up um, right around 9 o'clock um, on Sunday mornings as we move forward so that um, you may gather with us at that time um, for worship. Um, and, and of course, the, these you can also do so later as well if you know that particular time does not work with you. With that, I leave you with Christ's peace, now and forever. Amen.